Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we follow Chris Dalton on a couple of consecutive outings to address his Durkle. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. On two separate outings with a pair of regular clients, Chris Dalton is about to show how the professionals deal with a stalk that goes wrong. Basically, I had Matt and uh, Paul up with us towards the end of the book season in the summer. And uh, Dean took Paul and I had Matt with me. And as you'll see, we could find doors all over the place, but struggled quite hard to find a book, as is the case. Uh, but we did eventually got, get onto a book on a high banking. When the book eventually moves off the skyline, the shot is on, but it's not to be. And unfortunately my man missed, which happens, we've all missed. There's two types of stalker, there's those that miss and there's liars. Um, so that was kind of a, an unsuccessful stalk, but to be fair, it, a lot of stalks end that way. Fast forward to the doe season and Chris is determined to make this stalk a success. I actually met Paul down in West Yorkshire where I've got some fallow ground. The idea being to take him out there and, uh, and see if we could you know, catch up with a fallow pricket. I didn't want to shoot anything else, there's some very big bucks down there, some nice big does, but really the only thing on the call sheet was a pricket. We've got some roe there as well, so there's always a chance of a, of a young roe doe. It's a nice area of deciduous woodland in West Yorkshire. to the city centre actually so it's quite unique. One of the problems here we have in summer is that there's a high bracken concentration that's very thick and very dense. Now the frosts have started to knock it back. You can actually see the deer moving around quite freely. Down to our right we've also got one of the forest tracks and the fallow use that just to move around the wood. So again we've got quite a good vantage point from where we are. Uh, we didn't have a lot of time because it's quite a heavily populated area so the best plan down there is just to get into the forest fairly late on an hour and a half before dark and kind of lie up uh, and you get dog walkers and often they'll move the deer around into the quiet corners. The fallow in particular tend to come down the wall side and then get down into the meadow that's just behind it so that's what we're waiting for. A different stalking ground means different tactics prevail. Here, a high seat stint gives us the best chance. Unfortunately, because we were down in Yorkshire, I didn't have the trusty hound with me, so it was, uh, it was just Paul and myself using our own sensors. But we got a couple of, uh, well, the cameraman cocked up, mainly me, because we had a few fellow move in front of us. I just couldn't get them on camera. Um, I got one very fuzzy shot, but whether, whether that's worth showing or not, I don't know. We have to pass up the fallow and it seems all is lost until the very last minute. But then we did get some doe moving around, does moving around quite late. Um, and Paul managed to pick out um, a, a young road doe that crossed in front of us fairly close. Um, it was actually on a mission going from A to B, so I actually had to stop it and bark at it so he could get the shot just before it disappeared into cover. Hence the reason you'll see the camera jump and that's me making my best imitation of a road bark. Oh! Uh, 
Um, we did the follow-up, but we lost the light very quickly, and the deer had run, it only run about 30 metres actually, but it had run on an angled run, and again, it's like not having your, having your arm chopped off without the dog, so we were searching around in virtually in the pitch black, trying to find it, initially looking in the wrong place, and it had fallen right into a, a clump of thick sort of bracken and dropped down a little gully, so it was blooming hard to find, so we had about a 20 minute track up and down before we located it, but perfectly well shot and dead within sort of 25 metres. Uh, but you certainly miss the dog. Finally, we've got a deer on the ground, but there's still one thing left to go wrong. Unfortunately, completely pitch black at that point, and uh, we just couldn't get the uh, recovery of the deer on camera, but a nice young doe ended up back in the larder, so it's quite a, quite a, a nice uh, uh, end to a, a good stalk. OK, it's actually too dark to see Paul recovering this deer, but we've... Uh a bit of a search and found a nice little road deal. So we'll just do a grolic and uh, get off home. Chris there, finally bringing home the venison. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Shooting could have just got a £120 million funding boost. That's the amount of money made available for rural communities in the next round of the Rural Development Programme for England. And Bask says that money will benefit shooting and conservation projects across the country. Chairman Peter Glanzer said the funding would safeguard many businesses as well as helping new ones get off the ground. Southdown is the nation's favourite shooting ground. The West Sussex ground had finished runner-up in Clay Shooting Magazine's annual poll for the last two years, but this year it finally went one better to take the top spot. Ochter House in Scotland came second, with the South West Shooting School in third place. Grab a copy of the January issue of Clay Shooting to see the full results. There's another bird flu warning for keepers. The prevention zones around affected farms have been extended and will now be in effect until the end of February. This comes after bird flu was detected in a backyard flock of chickens and ducks in Wales. The NGO told its members to remain on the alert for signs of avian influenza and step up their security and record keeping when it came to transporting live game birds. And finally, Basque is bigger than ever. The organisation recorded a rise in numbers across 2016. Its membership now stands at 148,000. Head of membership David Ilsley said bringing so many people together for shooting means that we have the strength in numbers to do the job, whether with government, the media or when working with the many interests involved in shooting. That was the Shooting Show News. Well that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.